I want to take you back to my sophomore year of college. And I actually didn't even want to go back for my second year of college, but I had to. That same summer, there was a girl I really, really liked who I met my freshman year. And I was under the impression that we would stay together in our second year. And she was like the only thing keeping me going, the only reason why I wanted to go back. But that same summer leading up to sophomore year, she friend zones me. But I had to go back. What am I gonna tell my parents? Oh yeah, I'm not gonna go back to college because a girl broke up with me, a girl dumped me. Couldn't say that. And so immediately when I get back to school, I'm filled with anxiety, just filled with all these anxious thoughts, just nerves constantly running through my body because I didn't want to see her. I didn't have the confidence to talk to her as if nothing happened. I didn't have the confidence to you know what I mean? Like see her and, and speak to her like we were all good. No, I was heartbroken. I was literally torn apart because of it. And so that led me to being super depressed as well. Okay, and I'm gonna tell you a typical day of my sophomore year of college. I was only there for a month. But in this first month, pretty much every single day went the same. I'd wake up to my alarm, snooze it like seven times because I just, I couldn't get out of bed. I didn't want to get up. I'd wait for my roommate to leave the room go to his class and I'd probably lie to him and say, yeah, my, my classes are later, I don't need to go this morning, so that I could stay in bed and <clears throat> get my first nut in of the day. I'm being serious, like I was down bad. When he'd leave the room, I'd do it, obviously. I'm not, I'm not in there just jacking off while my roommate's in the room with me, fuck no bro, okay? But after that, get down from my bed and I plop my ass on the couch and oh, here comes the first bong rip of the day. I'm already high and it's fucking 30 minutes into the day. I'm already high. Wake and bake. And then, okay, I have a vape with me as well. So let me rip this vape every single day. Okay, every single day, smoking weed, vaping. And I was binge watching The Office every day, all day. That was my escape. I went to a few classes here and there, but I was so nervous to leave my room. One, because I didn't want to see that girl and two, because of my lifestyle, I had no confidence in myself. I was depressed, lonely, no reason for even being at this school. I didn't have a major that I was studying and I had no clue. At the same time, the bathrooms in my dorm room were co-ed, so get this, bro. I was nervous to go to the bathroom. I was nervous to go take a shit because I didn't want to go take a shit in front of a girl. Nowadays, I don't give a fuck. I would have the confidence to waltz in that bathroom, rip my pants down and just <clears throat> right in front of a girl, I don't care. But back then, where my mental health was shit, Hell no, I couldn't do that. I couldn't shit. <laughs> and I remember just literally being nervous to go to the bathroom. That's how mentally down bad I was. And I remember one day I went into the bathroom and I would like peek out into the halls. I'm not even shitting you. I would open my dorm room door, peek out into the halls, see if anyone was coming, and then go across the hall into the bathroom really quick and hope that no one was in there. But there was this one day, I went in there and I'm taking a shit. I'm trying to go as quick as possible so no girl walks in. 10 seconds into me, <laughs> pushing <laughs> a girl walks in and sits literally in the stall right next to me there was only two stalls so there was no other option she had to sit next to me <laughs> oh I'm, I'm literally horrified my heart just starts beating really fast i'm like oh my gosh there's a girl right next to me it's like a bathroom so it's silent in there right i'm like i'm not breathing anymore i'm literally just like holding my breath like it's just, it was one of those where you just had to pinch it out because it didn't flow very good because you were, you, you know, my breath was shallow and I was nervous. Terrible, terrible experience. I was so nervous that I couldn't even go shit. I was so nervous to even go to the bathroom, so nervous to even go to class and just sad. Okay, that's, that's another thing, just every day, just sad. I remember one day specifically where I was ripping a jewel at the time. So those, those jewel pods with like the, the juice in it, you probably know, if not, it is, it's just a stinky little vape, some bullshit. So I'm sucking on this jewel and I don't even know why, but I kept grabbing it. Like literally every five minutes, I would just grab it and rip it. And I was getting disgusted with myself because I wasn't, it wasn't even making me feel good anymore. Like when you rip nicotine, it feels good for the first fucking two days of doing it. And then after a little bit, it just, the feeling wears off. It's like, why am I even doing this? Cause you're addicted. I was so addicted. I was just, I kept doing it and I felt empty. I kept smoking weed. I felt empty. I was watching the office. I wasn't even laughing. It's a funny fucking show, but I wasn't even laughing. It was just on. And I was like a zombie just consuming this media just dead inside. Long story short, I end up going to a class about a month into my sophomore year. And like I said, I went to a few classes, but not a lot because of how difficult it was to just like interact with people. That's how bad my social anxiety was. So anyway, about a month in, I go to a class. All of a sudden I start getting all these negative thoughts, intrusive thoughts of, oh, 
this teacher's gonna call on me, he's gonna make me speak in front of all these people, fuck him, like literally getting mad at the teacher because he might call on me. And I would have to speak in front of kids. Getting even more nervous, more nervous, more nervous. These thoughts are spiraling. I have no idea how to control my breath. I have no idea because I'm not even, I was ignorant to any of this like breath work, meditation, any of that stuff. I was so ignorant to that back then. No idea how to calm myself down. Next thing you know, I'm profusely sweating. Like there's droplets on my forehead. I'm bright red. My friend next to me, what a guy. One of my best friends at that school, but he looks at me and says, bro, are you okay? Like literally I was, he could see that I was physically bright red, sweating. And he could tell probably just by the way I was looking that I was like overthinking because I was just AFK in my own head. And I look at him, I'm like, no. And I had to get up. I literally get up and walk out of the room. I wanted to run, but I don't know. I just didn't have the confidence to like, <laughs> I didn't have the confidence to run out of the room and have people look at me. So I just like tried to walk as casually as possible out of the room so it, it looked normal. Whatever. <laughs> I should have just ran. But I had a panic attack. Come to find out that's what it was. I, was. I literally had a panic attack. I go back in my room. I'm crying, bro. I'm a grown man crying. I wasn't a grown man. I was like I was like a man child at that point. Not even a man child. I was a I was a boy. I was a guy. I wasn't a man. Crying, called my mom and said, "Mom, I need to go home." Mom, this is bad. I'm anxious. I'm depressed. I hate my life. I hate being here. Tears coming down my face. I'm like trying to I'm not going to cry for you, bro, but like you can you can imagine. Anyway, she says, "Yeah, come on home. Let's go, Matt. Come on. You need to come home." So I did. I dropped out of school. And when I got home, I went to see a doctor. I told him about all these symptoms I'm having. I'm depressed, I'm anxious, I'm sad, I'm alone. And so he prescribes me an antidepressant. I think it was called Zoloft. And mind you, you remember what my typical days were looking like. I was watching TV all day. I was jerking off first thing in the morning when my roommate would leave the room. I was smoking weed all day, vaping all day. My habits were horrible, but he didn't ask me about my habits. He just prescribed me the pill, the antidepressant. And I'm not trying to blame doctors or anything, but like that's, that's what they do. That's how they treat mental health nowadays. But here in this video, I'm gonna give you five ways that I was able to actually improve my mental health later on in this vid, all right? I'm on these antidepressants for I don't know, about a month, and I start to see some improvement. You know, a little bit, a, a little bit. But to be honest, I think the biggest improvement came from just removing myself from school, coming home, coming into this childhood bedroom. It looks a lot different now, but anyway. Being home, being around my family, not having the stress of school, that helped tremendously. And then I started working a full-time job as a pizza delivery driver, so now I had some sort of mission some sort of reason for, you know, getting up. I had responsibility. I had to get my ass to work and I was able to make some money, stack up my money. A lot of that money went into smoking weed, went into buying weed, but hey, at least I was making money. Point being, I still had the same habits. Like in nowadays, I was able to go crazy on myself because I didn't have a roommate every single day, multiple times. I didn't have a roommate. Before work, after work. It was, it was at least twice a day, before work and after work. And at that time I started playing NBA 2K, so I'm now gaming every single day. I'm, I'm living vicariously through my character in the screen. My my player, who was a freaking beast, but I hated my life still. I'm not trying to shit on antidepressants, but they didn't work for me, okay? They didn't work for me because I had the same habits. I didn't fix my habits. I deserved to be depressed. I deserved to feel anxious. Not often you'll hear someone admit that yes, they deserve to be depressed. They'll blame outside circumstances. They'll blame other people. They'll blame life. I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but like, yes, bro, I owned it. I own, I own my mental health. I own my life. You gotta be an owner of your life, not a fucking victim. I was on these antidepressants for a long time. I think it was from October of 2019 all the way until like May or June of 2020. So what's that, like eight months, six months? I don't know. Either way, I was on them for a long time, but like if you know, you know, if you know my story, you probably know that by May of 2020, that's when I started self improvement. That's when I learned about NoFap. And bro, let me tell you right now, the first way to better your mental health is to stop watching porn. That shit is ruining your mental health. That shit, first of all, ruined my sex life. Couldn't get it up. Led me to NoFap though. So it was a blessing in disguise, huge blessing in disguise. And I'm all, I'm all good down there now because of the fact that I quit watching porn. You may not even know like, oh, Matt, why does porn make me depressed? How does that even work? Well, if you think about it, when you watch porn, the amount of dopamine that is released, that is like a motivation chemical in your brain where you're so motivated to seek out more and more and more, more novelty, more, more this, more that. When you first started watching porn, well, it was probably still images. It was probably girl on girl action. It was probably just some soft core shit. How quick did it take for you to end up watching some hardcore stuff, some extreme stuff, some BBC, some, some MILF, some, 
Ah, <laughs> oh, shit. Some fucking multiple dudes, multiple girls. Like, we're talking like a freaking... Yeah. How, how long did it take for you to escalate to those tastes? I'm not even ashamed to admit. It didn't take me long. I started out watching girls only. Because I'm like, oh, that's weird. Like, my brain was trying to tell me, bro, don't watch the shit. It's bad for you. But anyway, that's beside the point. You, your taste... Evolve because your brain wants more and more and more. You want more tabs open. You want to flip through this and this and this video and this video. You want to see this now. And just a side note, I used to think my dick was small because I was watching too much porn. Bro, you probably think your pee-pee is tiny because you're watching these dudes on Pornhub with massive pee-pees. Massive. At the same time, these, these scenes are staged. It's all fake. It's all fake. No dude is actually effing like that in real life, bro. Come on. So you're getting all these dopamine releases, these big dopamine spikes when you watch the hub, when you're seeking out, when you're motivated to go on the hub, you're getting this massive, it's so stimulating. It becomes the best part of your day. Your brain thinks, hmm, that is awesome. Why don't, we do, why don't we do more of that? Now the rest of your life sucks. Let alone the fact that when you do watch other people have sex and when you do nut all over your stomach, all over the freaking toilet, wherever, wherever, when you do that and you waste it away, you waste your seed, you waste your energy, you feel like shit, you feel like a loser. It's no wonder you're depressed. That was the biggest thing that improved my mental health was just stop watching porn. Now the second thing that helped improve my mental health was I deleted social media. Every single app besides YouTube, okay? Because YouTube for me was like the self-improvement hub. I was watching Ice Cold JT all the time. I was watching Jordan Green all the time. I was watching Von Tu Cut all the time. That was my hub for watching content that was helping me, just like this video. So I did not delete YouTube, but I deleted the other apps, Instagram, Snapchat, I think I had Twitter at the time. I deleted all three of them because when you're on Instagram and you're comparing yourself, you may not even be aware that you're comparing yourself, but oh yeah, you're comparing yourself when you're scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and you see this dude with a nice car, you see this girl with a nice ass, you see this guy with a six pack, you see that guy with big biceps, you feel inferior to them because you're now comparing yourself to them. How is that helping you? It's not, it's not serving you. I had a realization like, you know what? Why am I worried about other people's lives when I can't even fucking be happy on my own yet? I need to worry about me. I need to go within, not look at external stuff, not look at external people, other people doing whatever bullshit that they're doing. It doesn't matter, bro. Fuck the FOMO. Get rid of the FOMO, who cares? You don't have to delete it forever, by the way, too. Dude, prioritize your mental health. It's the only thing that you have at the end of the day. Think about it. You wake up, you're alone with your thoughts. You go to bed, you're alone with your thoughts. You need good mental health, desperately. If you want to achieve anything in this world, if you want success, if you want women, if you want friendships, you need it. So for right now, go delete your social media. If, you, if you're watching this video, your mental health is probably trash. So yes, bro, go do it. You don't have to delete your account because you can go back to it. If I were to go back to Instagram at this point, I probably would realize like, oh shit, yeah, I know why I deleted it, but it would be a lot easier for me to stay on there and not get depressed. I mean, honestly, I would probably give myself some mild depression just looking at other people because you literally, that's literally what you're doing by comparing yourself. Like, just worry about yourself, worry about yourself. But in my better headspace now, yeah, maybe I could scroll on Instagram for a little bit and not feel so shitty about myself. But back then, when I was at my low point, when you're at your low point right now, I had to get rid of it, I had to. And it was so beneficial because now all of a sudden I wasn't, first of all, getting the stimulation from just endless scrolling, right? So that took care of another source of just bullshit dopamine, getting rid of another source of instant gratification. And at the same time, I was no longer living through other people. I was no longer worried about other people, what they thought of me, this, that. I was just worried about myself and myself only. Allowed me to improve my mental health. So go do it, bro. I'm, I'm telling you right now, it will be one of the best things you do because at the same time, you're now gonna lower your screen time. When you constantly just are th like this far away from your phone, going on it all day long, bro, that's not real life. This is fake, it's fake. It's a man-made device. Real life is what's in front of you. When you lower your screen time, you will become happier. Now, the third thing I did to improve my mental health was I started to work out consistently. I started to hit the gym pretty much every single day. All right, your body and your mind are connected. When you are unhappy, when you're depressed, chances are you don't have a body you're proud of as well. So by me taking action and going to the gym and starting to work on my body, I now had something to be proud of. I now had something to work towards in real life. Something that was also painful in the moment, delayed gratification. I'd feel good after completing the workout, but in the moment it sucked, it hurt. Those bicep curls don't feel very good when you're on that 10th rep, but afterwards you feel proud of yourself. Moving your body more sweating more. These are all good for your mental health. These are all good for your chemicals up here. I don't know the exact science, but you don't watch me because of science. You watch me because you like me. You watch me because you can relate to me. And so bro, when I tell you to work out, 
I'm telling you, it's gonna change your life. If you're a man, you must be working out. If you want good mental health, you must be working out. And you know what? As you improve your mental health, like through quitting porn, through stopping social media, and through just like forcing yourself to go to the gym, the gym then becomes fun after a while. It's like once your mental health gets a little better, now you can actually enjoy the gym. Like I said, your mental health is everything. When you improve your mental health, that is step one in self-improvement. That is the first freaking priority in your life. Everything else becomes easier when you do that. Like I said, you want success, you want women, friendships, any relationships, you need good mental health. So hit the gym. The fourth way I improved my mental health was through meditation, daily meditation, consistent every single day, five minutes a day. Don't overthink it, just get the app, it's called Oak, set the timer for five minutes, unguided, and focus on your breath. This allowed me to reduce the stress in my life. It allowed me to come into the present moment. It allowed me to become more aware of who I was, aware of my negative thoughts, and allow those thoughts to just pass on through. Your thoughts are not you. You are not your thoughts. You don't have to identify with every single one of your thoughts. You can choose to act on this thought or this thought or not act on them at all. I don't want to spend too much time on meditation because a lot of people just fucking think I'm weird when I tell them to meditate. They're like, that doesn't do anything. That doesn't work. Go watch my video, Three Ways Meditation Changed My Life, and you might think differently. All right, bro? So I'll leave like a card on the screen for that. But I guarantee meditation is so crucial. It, there's literally studies shown that it alleviates depression, improves your mental health. But let's move on to the fifth way that I improved my mental health, which was through reading. Yes, reading. <laughs> You're probably like, shut up, Matt. How does that improve my mental health? Oh, st books are stupid. You know what? The very first self-improvement book I ever read was called Outwitting the Devil. And I recommend you get that book right now, okay? Don't overthink it. Just go pick up that book, buy it on Amazon, whatever it may be, and start reading that book. It will change your life. It will change your perspective on bad habits versus good habits, on things that are just like distractions in your life. It'll if you, Even if you're not religious, bro, you don't need to be religious to read this book. It's a fantastic book. So the reason why reading actually improved my mental health is because, think about it, instead of me being on my phone, I'm now picking up a book. It's a form of delayed gratification. It's not super stimulating. It's not overstimulating. It's just like you in the words. And reading is good for your soul. Damn, it's good for your soul. A lot of people don't understand that reading, if you don't read, you're just becoming dumber. You're becoming dumber and dumber and dumber over time. In school, we used to read, but we read stupid books that no one cared about. Go pick up Outwitting the Devil, another book, Magic of Thinking Big, go pick up that book. The Way of the Superior Man, those three are probably my top three. Go pick up those books and actually enjoy what you're reading. Read fiction books for all I care. Like I said, it's good for your soul, it's good for your mental to be away from the screens. And if you're not reading, you're just, you're dying. If you're not growing, you're dying. You've heard that before, right? So if you're not feeding your mind new knowledge, you're just regressing in life. Oh, but Matt, watching podcasts is the same as reading. Not really, not really. It takes a lot longer to sit there and read a full book than it does to watch a podcast. And a lot of people don't even understand too that reading makes you a better speaker. Reading makes you smarter. I mean, that's obvious, right? Reading makes you smarter, but it makes you a better speaker. It makes you more articulate. So go read a book, bro. Maybe go read Harry Potter for all I care. I read Harry Potter books every single night before bed. I love them. Gotta get my fiction time in. With that said, let me give you a sixth way to improve your mental health. You need to set goals. You need to have either one goal, two goals, however many goals you want, but you need a goal to go after. You need a goal to guide you. Without goals, you don't have anything you're striving for. I don't care what your goal is. It can be, oh, I wanna make the basketball team next year. It can be, oh, I wanna make the baseball team next year. It can be, oh, I wanna make $10,000 per month next year. It can be, I wanna graduate from high school. You need a goal that you're chasing. Back when I was in college, my sophomore year, when I was depressed, anxious, and fucking horrible mental health, I had no goal. I had no reason for being there. I had no purpose for living. I had no meaning. I have no reason to get out of bed in the morning. Your goals are what guide you. You should have your goals written down in your wall. If you wanna see, I, here, look. All that shit I write on my wall, it's my goals, it's my dreams, it's my vision. You need to have your goals in front of your face to guide you. Of course you're depressed. You have nothing to, this might be the most important point. Like, of course you're depressed. You have nothing that is meaningful in your life. You have no reason to live, essentially. It sounds horrible, you have no reason to live. I had no reason to live back then in college. What is your biggest desire in life right now? Is it to build a better body? Make your goals based on that. Is it to study hard and graduate and get a degree? Make your goals based on that. I remember when I was not even on YouTube, one of my biggest goals was graduate college. One of my other biggest goals was become an electrician. One of my other biggest goals was move out of my mom's house and into my own apartment. One of my other biggest goals was bulk to 185 pounds. I had these four goals. They were my they were my guideposts. They were. I didn't even have YouTube yet. My goals now are obviously based on YouTube, but before that, no, they were based on college, getting a job, moving out of my mom's house, income goals, and it, it literally saved me from depression. Those five habits plus setting a goal, multiple goals, saved me from depression, and I ended up 
getting off of the antidepressants. I don't need those. I'm mentally okay. I attacked the root of the problem, which was porn, which was overstimulation, which was weed. I didn't even mention quitting your addictions, but that's another huge thing to improve your mental health. I attacked the root cause and cut that shit off. So now I'm a mentally happy person, mentally stable. <laughs> Before I was, un I was unstable. And yeah, the doctor will just prescribe you this, but why not attack the root cause? So anyway, that was my story. Hope you learned a thing or two. Before I end it, the other thing that is very valuable for improving your mental health is gratitude. Practicing daily gratitude is huge for recognizing, hmm, I may not have a lot in my life. I may be depressed right now, but you know what? I'm still grateful for being alive. I'm still grateful for my mother. I'm still grateful for my father. I'm still grateful for the shoes on my feet, the roof over my head. Be grateful, bro. Forget happiness. It's gratitude that you're chasing. Gratitude is what gives you the happiness. It's to realize, you know what? I'm grateful that it's freaking... 20 degrees out right now. I'm grateful for it. Am I gonna sit here and complain that it's winter time? No, I'm grateful for it. I love the state that I live in. I love the north. I'm instantly in a better mood just by expressing my gratitude for how shitty the weather is. Like, it's, it's powerful and another way to improve your mental health. I didn't get into this until after I built that foundation of those first five habits. Well, not even habits, but like quitting porn, quitting social media. Those first five things, I that was my foundation. Recently, I got into gratitude and I'm just, it was like another extra boost to my mental health. So I'll leave you with that. And with that said, I really genuinely hope this video helped you. If you made it this far, comment, uh, Matt is a Pop-Tart, okay? Matt is a Pop-Tart, comment that right now. <laughs> like, comment, subscribe if you're new, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.